Confident and welcome back to D14 tonight. Aside from live interviews during our program, we're also hearing from our team of analysts as well as guest commentators. In studio this week are former Senator Jess Lujan from The Buzz and Sean Gumatatao, a longtime anchor and sports director here at KUAM and was the former chief of communications for former Governor Felix Camacho. Thank you guys for being with us tonight and Thank you, all Bree. through the election well, campaign. <laughs> I tell you, we're off to the main event now. Right. Right. Off to the main event. Yeah, and it's not a sprint, <laughs> it's a marathon. I mean, between now and the final, um, you know, uh, I guess you call it the final results in, it's going to be mm -hmm. really, it's going to be just a bit, one big race. Sure, and as a matter of fact, when the, when the polls, the, I guess the initial polls came out from the University of Guam, and I didn't see uh, you know, my former colleague, uh, James uh, Espaldon on there, I said, no, this has got to be wrong. Mm -hmm. But see, Jim did not remind the folks who was running ah, before the polls came right. out. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> so, but now he is, so he's a serious contender, and Jim's going to make it. Okay, <laughs> your top 15, let's right off the top of your head. Well, I, I, to be honest with you, I think it's going to be, it, it might remain 9-6 Democrat. It might be an 8-7 Democrat uh, as well with this. And uh, again, looking at um, the, um, I mean, unless, again, unless the newcomers, just go out there and get their message out there. I'm seeing some newcomers that have potential, haven't got their, their message out there before the, before the primary. They should get it out. If that's the case, then it could be just the, the opposite, 9-6 Republican, 8-7 Republican. Yeah, well. I mean, I, I think right now uh, you're the mainstays in the Democratic Party. You still have uh, the, sp uh, the speaker. speaker sure. You have uh, Rory, which I think might be a little bit uh, lower in this uh, going into the final uh, 15, mm -hmm. if he even makes the 15. Why I say that is if you look at some of, uh, I guess, the push by, uh, well, of course, on the other side of the ticket, wondering, you know, can he sustain being leader of the Democratic Party of Guam and still get out there and get the vote out? He's really busy right now. Yeah. I know that he's uh, he's trying to balance his work as mm -hmm. uh, as the you know the as a senator and that. Uh, and Chairman. I say it with all due respect to sure. him, but I mean, he still, has a sh you know, he'll still will probably be there with B.J. Cruz. Um, I believe on the Republican side uh, with uh, Frank Bloss, uh, mm -hmm. Jimmy S. Baldon, uh, Mary Torres. Uh, I mean, I think those right now will probably be that core that will be fighting for the top seven sure. um, positions mm -hmm. uh, in the legislature. And then Speaker. What do you uh, about Will Castro, happened? though? I know he came. He was in the top well, I, I, nine. I think, right. I, I think you, probably the probably the most promising of all the uh, of all yeah, the newcomers coming in here uh, coming in will has gotten his matches out there uh, fast <clears throat> will of course uh, has uh, Democrat roots of course has um, you know decided against this point run uh, as, a, as a Republican uh, but he's got the Democrat roots so he's got he's got the both he's got both sides and, and we're gonna see this now um, we're gonna see this now when when the crossover vote happens now with yes. going into the general election I mean uh, to Tina Barnes I, I think sure. we can't uh, we, we cannot uh, mm -hmm. forget her uh, the crossover appeal sure. of uh, of a guy I, I, I like, I'm really excited about Adonis Mendiola mm -hmm. and and what he's sure. he's done a, a fantastic job as DUI director. I know mm -hmm. he's had struggles from a policy point of mm -hmm. view, but he he's done a, a good job of getting his name out there. He's at all of uh, all the villages. Sure. He's touching the hands, kind of mm -hmm. the important part of the entire grassroots effort to to get elected. Yeah, you uh, always see him. I always see him on sure. the side of the road, uh, uh, of course. waving at people. Yeah, and mm -hmm. uh, incumbent, incumbents again. We we must not forget uh, Dennis Rodriguez Jr. Oh, right. uh, yes. D Dennis, mm -hmm. Dennis, I think is going to finish high. He's uh, again, um, you know, he's a very personable guy. You know, and and even from the early on, even from his initial uh, win, basically, there was talk about. Yeah, he he's got the makings of. Uh, yeah, gubernatorial material. Uh, yeah, yeah, and, sure. and, and don't uh, don't yeah. forget uh, Frank Ogden. I think there's sure. Oh, yeah. uh, sure. he is uh, the the I guess call him the after this election cycle. Mm -hmm. um, there's some that think that he would probably be the heir apparent going mm -hmm. into uh, into the whole sure. entire f next four years. He is um, without a doubt, in my opinion, very classy. He is very uh, astute. And he can campaign like no other, in my opinion, right now. There's, there's guys like a BJ that can argue. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, I mean, he's doing a fantastic job this cycle. He's out there. Sure. Um, and I also, uh, let's not forget the, the other Republican incumbents. you still got Tommy Morrison. you got Brett McCready. you got Chris Duenas. Uh, Senator Tony Yamashita. Adda and, and Yamashita. Yeah. I mean, the, so it's, a, it's kind of a, we talked about the first seven, but, I mean, that whole makeup sure. of the, the remaining sure. balance of the legislature uh, and Jess, I don't know, he has more insight to it, but at the end of the day, once that's done, who will be the next speaker? Because we know that there's been some discontent mm -hmm. um, uh, with Speaker Wampat, though she's done a, a decent job. 
but I think there's going to be probably a bit of a change, and mm -hmm. we'll see what happens in caucus. And you agree? I don't <laughs> well, I, I, I tell you, yeah. If, uh, well, okay. If the Republicans, if the the Republicans b get the majority, well, of course you have uh, you have. Uh, Frank Walsh Jr., you have Jimmy Spaldon, and then uh, and, and those guys, and they'll be vying. Uh, Jimmy will <laughs> will say, "Well, I, I was a gubernatorial candidate here, you know," and yeah. so he's he's you know he's he's going to hold his own with that. Also, likewise, I, I think Frank Bloss Jr. he's he's going to fight for that. And likewise, the the ones that are incumbents in there, Senator Alina Mishida, who's mm -hmm. the I think the assistant uh, minority leader. Right. Likewise, uh, the the minority leader at this point, uh, uh, Ton, uh, Tony Tony uh, Adda. Tony Adda. So Tony will say, "Oh, wait a minute, yeah, I'm going to have it." You know, mm -hmm. so that in itself, that's a that's a whole different dynamics in caucus. I, that'd be a, I would I would love to be in that caucus. <laughs> well, enough, enough <laughs> about the senatorial <laughs> race. With what time we have left, let's talk about the gubernatorial mm -hmm. race. Okay. What are your thoughts on? Well, that? I, I, I I think the the Calvo uh, the Calvo Tenorio uh, administration, of course, have done a, a, a decent job. Uh, it's going to be it's going to be close, and you know you never take anything for granted. Of course, mm -hmm. uh, right. you're going against uh, probably one of the best politicians. Of course, but I, I still think that I still think that uh, I, um, Eddie Calvo um, is is gonna is gonna make it, and uh, I think he's gonna make it early on in the evening. You know, he's. <laughs> wow. I mean, he's. Um, remember, Governor Gutierrez has ran in every single election for governor since 1973. Mm -hmm. He is also, uh, uh, I guess, in this this election is a little bit different, right? He is coming into it. Perhaps this will be his last uh, his last. Uh, you think so? I think so. And there's, <laughs> there's no question that uh, the, the party is trying to bring forward new leaders. Um, it, it is, it's not been disruptive. I mean, with all due respect to, to Governor Gutierrez, mm -hmm. I think that he's uh, doing it, the election a little bit differently. Nothing, nothing is going to change about how he handles the grassroots effort. He's got a core base of supporters who are out there trying to get out the vote. Um, but I the, can, and you can mobilize like this. <laughs> yeah, and, and they're already doing it now. Sure. They, and so I mm -hmm. think that's. I mean, that, that can't be discounted. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But they're even more important that this election, in my opinion, is going to be record versus record. Mm -hmm. Whether or not that will translate depends on how well they articulate their uh, issues and their concerns to the people of Guam and how they receive it. Okay. Any final comments? Well, I, the, another uh, interesting race. We'll watch the delegate race because I, yes. I, I, I think uh, you know uh, Margaret Metcalf, the Republican. Of course, she's got the fire, and um, I like to see these two ladies go at it. And, and, and when I was on this set <laughs> in 2002, we talked about this political juggernaut named Robert Underwood, and who would, should have never lost to a Felix Camacho. But then, in 61,000 people uh, who were registered to vote. They came on overwhelmingly in the largest margin in the history of Guam elections, elected him. So in this case, Madeline Berdayo is the juggernaut sitting in that mm -hmm. seat again. If Margaret Metcalf can, can switch people's thoughts about what the role of the delegate should do in Washington, D.C., then you might have another big upset here. That's right. It makes good radio talk for me anyway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, thank you guys for coming in. And of course, you can expect more analysis and lively discussion from our analysts every week on D14. Stay tuned. We'll wrap up the show after this. Brought to you by Triple J, celebrating 30 years of putting our customers first.